So I thought today I'd show you how to install the Xenon GC. I know there's many, many, many videos out there on the internet already on how to do this. Um, but I mean, I figured I'd just talk it through it. I've never done it before. I only did a video on the alternative points in case you messed it up. Um, but I figured I might as well do it. So I've already uh, tinned the points. I'll play that clip right now. So first thing I always like to do for anything is tin every single individual point. Um, we've got these two right here. So there's that one. Right there, and these ones are already pretty tinned, but you know it's good because uh, if you're like me, you've got a uh, a Rosen core solder, so it's got flux on it. So then that makes it so that I don't have to apply any flux or buy any flux stick. So if you've got a uh, a Rosen core solder, doing this kind of helps spread the solder around. So there we are, right there and the last two, right here. And just let it get heated. There it is. And make sure that there's um, no real uh, shorts between any of them. This shouldn't be. And uh, now that you've seen how to tin the points, um, basically you can see that I have a, well it's more of a chisel tip, um, most likely you're going to have, um, if you've never done this before, you're probably going to have a new sliding iron and it's going to have a canonical tip. Uh, that is the very needle-like one. I will, I'll get it up for you. Da -da 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 -da. Here's the abundance of random tips that I have. So this is the one that most uh, starter ones come with. And it's very sharp and you can kind of see how you would want to use this almost, or something like this. And it is um, useful for fine applications. Uh, you could argue that this would be a very useful uh, tip for this, where you can just sort of go like this, heat it up and be done. But um, I'm going to argue against that because uh, canonical tips are for extremely fine stuff. If you saw my, uh, something like the PlayStation 2, uh, where you did those fine uh, 30 gauge wires, something really small, this would be useful. Um, but for something that's actually this large, which may seem small, it doesn't apply heat very well. Um, something like this. If you're going to find yourself having to go like this, and it's just going to start getting very messy very quickly. So I'm actually going to recommend the uh, chisel tip over that one. Um, simply because you're going to get a better heat distribution, especially with a cheaper iron. I'm using a cheaper iron myself right now. It's a, a Yehua. Three, uh, 937, you can get them for like $20, and essentially that's what I recommend doing. So we're going to apply a little bit of um, electrical tape just to hold it down in place, uh, get it lined up nicely. It is should line up with capacitor 31. Um, if you don't know uh, which points to tin, you can mark them off with a marker just around the edge, but uh, not always the best idea. So hopefully this electrical tape will hold it in place. It does tend to like to move around a little bit. So we're going to try and get that just right. Just makes your life easier, eh? And we will be taking this electrical tape back off in just a little while. Let's get that as good as we can. Again, the solder is going to take care of the majority of it for us. And there we are. So. I make sure you're still in focus. I'm using a very macro lens here, so hopefully you can see everything really well. Um, I might bring you around in just a little bit if it's too difficult to see. Uh, I'll bring it up just a bit, see if it's any better. I'm not sure. Eh, I hope that's useful for you. So, what we're going to do here, and I hope you get to see the general idea of what I'm saying, is we're going to heat up the point, something like, let's say, this one here. And we're just going to start to apply the solder to the tip and just let it flow down. Now it's a liquid at this point, so it's going to flow down and move onto the point that we tinned and the flux is going to make it apply. So that's the reason we tinned it earlier too, like I said, is because this is a Rosen core solder. If you don't have uh, a solder with a Rosen core or whatever, um, you may want to apply flux first because, it may, you will want to apply flux first because it will not attach. So hopefully you can see that. I'm going to move it around. Maybe you can get a better angle. I'll see if you got a better angle. 
And again. Just gonna take a bit here. And we're just gonna apply, really moving it around, sorry about that. Heat here. And then we're gonna apply it straight on. And it should just flow down as we apply it. See, it's almost touching. A little bit more, a little more heat. And you can see it starts to touch there, just a little bit more. And there it is. Touched nicely. If you're very uh, obsessive about it, you can even bring the whole tip in. There you go. Now you know for sure it's there. And that's a bit much. You might even want to take a little bit off. And for that, you have um, a solder wick. A solder wick looks something like this. So this is the stuff you can get. Um, and you would just heat it up, take some off. But I think that's pretty good, so I'm not going to bother doing that. And again, we're just going to do the next one too, which is right here. And this one's a little farther away, if you can tell. So this one's going to take a little bit of a stretch to get to, but it should be alright. Sometimes um, I've seen a technique with wire used, but this is such a small point that see, even once you've tinned that point, they just sort of join together. And you can see that that's perfect. Uh, now I'm going to get moving it on to the other side here for you. Hopefully you can see it. Move you back in frame. And again, it's all a matter of just heat, a little bit of patience, and it'll flow down. So we're going to do this one. That's the side. So let it flow down. And let go. And it's flowed onto that point right there. We're going to do the same for that one. I can't really see it too well, but you can see it perfectly. And the thing is, we're getting into right here is we're actually kind of going to melt this electrical tape, but we've got one, two, three, four, five points done. We've got one left. So I'm going to actually take this off because right now the soldering is holding it. The solder is holding it in perfectly. We don't need the electrical tape anymore. And I'm going to do the last point here. Hopefully it's good for you. I just didn't want to melt the electrical tape. And I can't see. Yep, that looks good. So I hope you were able to see better than I was um, how when you apply it a little bit to the tip, a little bit to the back, and just a little bit down there, and it just sort of flows right in, and it'll go on to the points that you tinned. And that should pretty much be the Xeno GC. It's that simple. Um, I hope you found this useful. Just a quick little video of showing you how to install this mod chip. All right, so I'll show you uh, a quick test, and then that'll be it. So you don't have to reassemble the GameCube completely. I've just put on the disk drive right here, and I've connected the little uh, power module, and I've connected some composite cables so that I can actually see what's happening. And what we're going to do is we're just going to peer into the disk drive right here and look between the ribbon cable and the metal housing, and we should see a red LED. Um, so let's go ahead and look for it. I'm going to power it on, and there it is. There's our red LED, and it should go off and come back on a certain color. Now it can come back on either orange, uh, green, and if you bought one of the cheap eBay ones, which I've done before, and it works perfectly fine, it'll come back on red sometimes, uh, which is quite confusing. So you might even, at that point, you'll be able to tell soon enough. But uh, if it comes back any of those three colors, it should be good. Um, some issues you may have. Uh, if it stays solid red, then most likely you're missing a data connection. So make sure to maybe reflow the solder, some of the data points and whatnot. Just make sure that it's done, sort of like how I showed you applying the heat. Maybe don't add too much solder, just sort of reapply the heat and make sure it's flowed nicely. Um, if you see a rapidly blinking red LED, it means you've got a short somewhere. So uh, take some of the wick I showed you and just take the solder off certain points, maybe all of the points sort of reflow it again, make sure you didn't short anything out, um, make sure there's no shorts in between each of those little pads. Um, if you need uh, to look up how to use desoldering wick, you can look that up. There's plenty of tutorials on that. And another thing that you might have is you get no light at all. If you get no light at all, then, then you have no power running to the chip, most likely. Um, and you might even have it all right except for the power. So in that case, I'll turn it off for you right here. Just go to manual focus here. If you are having difficulty, sometimes... Oh, there we are. Let's try to get it in focus for you. Sometimes these pins right here, these two at the top, can be a little bit difficult because they're sort of floating over two, and um, it doesn't... 
the solder doesn't want to go down for some reason. Sometimes it'll just sort of float at the top. If that happens, you can take a small wire, just sort of heat it up and um, place that exposed wire down and then let it go, and then trim off the top. That may help. This is the 5 volt one right here. Is it 5 volt? Or it might be 3 volt. Either way, that's the power one. So if you don't get any LED indication, make sure that that one's reflowed right there. Um, either way, let's go ahead and actually test it now. I've just got Metal Gear on there. A clone of that. Sorry about this shaky camera here. I don't normally do stuff like this. There we are. I'm going to look right back at it again. Do, 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 do. And let's go ahead and hold down the indicator to tell it that the disk drive is closed. There's a laser coming up. And as you can hear, it's having a hard time booting that game. Um, this happens quite frequently. So we're going to go look up at the top. You can see it's not booting it. Thank you, Autofocus, for being super loud. But you can see it's not booting the game whatsoever. It's having a real hard time. And it's pretty much given up. So if that happens, no worries. That is very common. It's just the fact that the discs are not of the same quality. The discs are not of the same quality as the original GameCube disc. So basically what you have to do is you have to uh, calibrate the lens strength. So the lens, the laser itself coming out of it, we need to increase the strength coming out of it. Um, so there's a potentiometer on the bottom. Do, 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 do. We'll do another shaky camera here. My apologies. There's a tiny little potentiometer right here that you can adjust. And I will have a video in the top right explaining how to do that, how you can calibrate that and make your uh, games run perfectly. So I wasn't going to do a portion on the lens calibration, but I decided while we're here I might as well. So you're going to need a multimeter, and just set it to resistance measurement. There's a little ohm symbol that we have right here. And um, if you have smaller probes, it's a lot easier, but most likely you won't. You'll have these ones like here, looks sort of like this. They're about two millimeters, three millimeters thick. And um, essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to probe, <laughs> well, literally probe each side of this potentiometer, like I said before. So let me zoom in a little bit here, so you can still see both. And we're going to place either the black or the red at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to place it on one side, so we're going to place it on the left, and there's a center sort of pin. And then on the other side, we're going to place the black probe on the bottom. So let me go ahead and do that here. And it can be difficult to find with probes these large. And there we go. So that's the resistance we're looking for. Around, yeah, let me get it right. And I had it. And this is the exact point which I'm about to sort of make in a minute. If you're having difficult finding it, or you're getting strange measurements on this potentiometer, like one ohm or something like that, the easiest way to get a solid measurement is to place uh, one of the probes right next to the resistor on the top half right here, which you should see, and then touch the other side to basically any ground plane, the screw uh, or whatever, and you should get the measurement right there. So that's 245. So what we're aiming for is actually about um, 200, 200 uh, 190, but mostly 200. We're aiming right for 200. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to take just any old screwdriver, um, you're going to need a pretty precision one, a pretty small one right here, and we're just going to turn this screw, like, like I, just like I said, counterclockwise, which is reducing the resistance just a touch. So we've almost made it at 12 o'clock there, we went from 1 o'clock to about 12 o'clock. I'm going to test the resistance again. I just lost the probe down here, let me go do that again. Do, 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 do. So again, just placing the black one there, and on any ground plane. Oh, and we got 122, so way too low. So we're going to turn that back up. We don't want it too low because you can easily burn out the lens um, with too much power. So we're going to bring this back up just a touch here. A little bit more than that, I'd say. Okay, that's probably right about where we were. 240, yep, yeah. so we bring it down just a touch. Very touch, it's not much. There we are. That should do it. Let's try it again. As you can see, I'm just placing that other probe on basically any ground plane. So 193, I'm going to be a real OCD here. 
and make it just 200. Perfect. All right, so we've got 200 right there. And uh, essentially that should do it. So we'll go ahead and test it again and see if it worked. And in the top right, if you seem to mess up all of these points, and it happens, I've burnt off plenty of points before I have the alternative points method right up in the top corner. So if you burn off all the points, or you burn off a few essential points, don't panic. There are alternative points that you can use to still attach this. Um, so it's a second chance. All right, so I hope you found this useful. I know there's plenty of videos on this already, but I hope you found it somewhat informative, and I'll see you next time.